Welcome to the Do Life and a Body You Love podcast. I'm Nikki O'Day, and we are going to talk about any and every topic that will get you showing up bigger and bolder in your life. Weight loss, relationships, mindset, it's all on the table. It may not come out real PC, but if you're sick of motivational rah-rah talks that don't lead to any real change in your life, then you're in the right place. Let's jump into today's episode. What's up, do life in a body you love ladies today? I'm getting sassy. We're going to talk about four things that are kind of like commonly thought or said catchphrases, if you will, that are supposed to be like motivating or good for our health or whatever. And that the truth is that these ideas are just like total garbage and they make me crazy when I hear them. And if I'm being honest, I've even said some of these things myself. So if you commonly say these things, don't feel personally attacked, (laughs) but I'm going to give you a little bit of a different perspective on these topics. So there's four of them, like I said, and the first one is that you can be anything you want to be. That's not true at all. Like (laughs) I can't be tall. I'm already a 40 year old woman with a crazy history. I'm probably not going to be the president. Like there are just things that are not in the cards for me. There are things that were never in the cards for my children, right? Certain things that were just never going to be true. Now, here is the truth though. The truth is that we are all capable of so much more than what we believe is possible in certain realms. So I'm not going to like, um, wish my way into being tall or throw it out there to the universe or some of these other kooky things that I hear people talking about, but we are way more capable financially, physically, um, all different kinds of like types of mindset issues, like anything in your life that you want to make an improvement in any area, any area, I promise you that it is possible and you can take it so much farther than you think you can. So it may not be true that you can be anything that you want to be, but you can be so much more than what you think is possible for you. And that's not to say that you should be striving to do more in any certain area. But if there's an area of your life that you ever think, man, I wish, or man, wouldn't it be great if, go down that path a little bit, because I bet there's a, there's a lot of hidden treasures in there for you. So, and I'm somebody who tends to think big anyways, in all different kinds of areas. I just, I have wild thoughts and I just, I'm like, okay, let's go do this thing. And so, but even for me, you guys, like as I step into different levels of my life and start to realize, wow, I wasn't even dreaming big enough. Right. So it may not be true that you can be anything that you want to be, but I want to encourage you to dream super big, know that you have amazing capabilities that you're not even aware that you have, and just start taking action into being the person that you want to be in these different areas of life. Okay. So that's number one, number two, meatless Mondays, meatless, this meatless that I'm so sick of it. I could scream. I could do a podcast episode about this topic for like two hours long, but I won't I'm going to keep it real surface level here and just tell you that this whole plant-based movement is trash. It is not better for your body to give up meat. Is it good for your body to eat more plant matter? Yes. Is it good for your body to eat more meat? Absolutely. It's better for your body to just come off processed food as a whole. That's what the truth is. The reality is that humans are omnivores, not a very commonly used word to describe humans anymore, right? We have the vegan camp who says all animal products are evil and they're going to kill you and give you cancer. And then we have the carnivore group that's like, well, all of the toxins in the plants are going to destroy us all and you shouldn't eat any plants and blah, blah, blah. Here's the deal. Go read a biology book. Humans are omnivores, period. End of story. What is best for your body? is meat and plants. If you were on the ideal human diet, that is what it would look like. Now, are there times when carnivore might be helpful? Vegan might be helpful. In rare circumstances, those diets may have benefits for some people. But for most people, 
you're going to thrive if you're eating animals and plants. That's, that's just the reality of it. Um, no, I do not want you to cherry pick studies and send them to me. I've already looked at every flipping thing out there over the course of 10 years and you sending me one little tiny snippet of a poorly done study is not going to change my mind. Um, it is not better for the environment to take me out of the equation either. So <laughs> it's not better for you and it's not better for the planet. Here's the deal monocropping agriculture. This is where you have like rows and rows and rows of corn or rows and rows and rows of soy or whatever. That actually emits greenhouse gases onto itself, kills animals and habitats and vegetation and bees and wrecks our environment, just like industrialized breeding of cows. It's not the animal that's the problem. It's the way that we farm. And it's also true of plants. So God, I'm going to say, but you could say mother nature, whatever you believe to be true, created the earth with humans, plants, animals, cows, poor cows. They're so vilified. Their cow burps are ruining the earth. No, cows have always been here. So how are cows the problem all of a sudden? That literally doesn't even make any sense. Oh, it drives me nuts. If you guys want to nerd out on that topic, probably the most well put together piece of information that's actually accurate that I've seen is a book called Sacred Cow. So instead of falling for this meatless Monday garbage stuff and promoting veganism, do yourself a favor and read that book. Do not take plant or do not take animals out of your diet. You will end up with nutritional deficiencies and you will end up chubby. That is what happens when people pull meat out of their diet. All right, we'll move on to number two. <laughs> or number three, sorry. Okay. Number three is that you need to be motivated to lose weight, improve your career, insert whatever thing you're working on. Here's the deal. I love motivational speakers. If they're good, right? If they're like cheesy, then I'm like next, but a good one, I could listen to them all day long. Um, and I have some that I do listen to, but here's what I know to be true. Motivation can fire you up, but it's momentary and it's an emotion and emotions are fickle. And if we only behave in ways that will get us to our goal, when we feel like it, we will never get to our goal. The people who have the things that we want are not more motivated than us. They've developed habits, skills, you know, they're following a proven system. They get up and they do it when they don't want to. And so if we're always just depending on motivation, we stay stuck. Now, the other thing that's true is that as you start to get results from your actions, you will then become more motivated to stay the course. So it's almost like you need to take action and see results before you're going to have this real version of motivation anyways. And then we just sit around waiting to be motivated. And I see that keep so many people stuck. So if you don't feel motivated, that's okay. We just need to give you other skills to keep you going. So if you're normally motivated, for instance, to stay on a diet for three days or three weeks or even three months, but it really takes those things a year to become a habit because that's actually more psychologically true than this whole idea that you make a habit in 21 days. That's garbage. Not true at all. Um, so if that's a, there's a huge gap there though, when our motivation usually fails and when we've made a habit, right? So there's our evidence that motivation is not going to be the thing that gets us there. And then the fourth one that I want to fire off about is that you should just, you should do the things that make you happy. What? 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 So this is garbage. What are you talking about? If we all ran around doing the things that just made us happy, the whole world would be on fire. Like <laughs> we would all be totally broke, divorced, overweight. Uh, our societies would have completely collapsed. Like if you, if you hate our government now, just think of everybody was really just doing everything that they wanted. Like, no chasing momentary happiness will lead to a miserable life. Miserable. Can you imagine like, and we know this to a certain degree, right? We don't do all the things that would just feel good in the moment. Um, but then we commonly say these things to each other. We put little memes on Facebook, like follow your heart, do whatever makes you feel good. If it's not making you happy, cut it out of your life. And it's like, you know what? 
a lot of the most important aspects of my life don't necessarily make me happy in the moment. Like I've never been happy to have to like discipline my child. Like it doesn't feel good. I don't enjoy it. It doesn't make me happy. But if I don't do that, they're going to grow up to be little turds, right? So then it's like one of those things that you just, you have to do to get the result that you want. That's most of life, right? And so when we chase after these things that give us momentary happiness, usually the end result is lifelong misery. So we actually have to do things that don't make us happy in the moment and have some like long distance thinking and put some thought into it, develop discipline. Don't always do the thing that makes you happy. Do the thing that is the right thing to do, because those are often not the same thing, right? You behaving congruent with your morals and your ethics and your plan, whether that is a financial plan, whether that is a health plan, when you do the things that are going to guide you down that path, that is going to give you joy and purpose. And that is where we actually find happiness. So we often look at people who are very successful by the world standards and we go, okay, this guy was at the top of the mountain. How does he have depression? How are people that are the successful committing suicide? What is up with that? If we're just chasing things we think are going to make us happy, the reality is that circumstances do not make us happy and giving in to our every heart's desire doesn't make us happy either. Happiness comes from purpose. It comes from behaving in a way that's congruent with the person that you want to be. Lots of ways that we get happiness, but it's never in that momentary bite of ice cream. And by the way, I'm not saying any of these things with judgment, like whatever you're out there doing, you do you boo. I used ice cream as an example because I really like ice cream. It's not going to be found in these momentary fleeting feats of dopamine that we get when we partake in the things that bring us temporary satisfaction, right? But they're not driving us anywhere. Now, is this to say that you never indulge in something that just gives you momentary happiness? No, of course not. Like, I don't live like a prude. I don't expect you guys to either. Sometimes you just want the ice cream. And when you have it, have it with no guilt. Partake, live it up, even though it's not getting you to your goals. Like, Every action doesn't have to get you to your goals, but this whole notion that everybody should just be doing whatever makes them happy, I think is like probably the worst advice that I've ever heard. So let me know, (laughs) how does this one sit with you guys? This was more just me kind of ranting and popping off about some things that drive me crazy. So maybe not quite as upbeat as the usual thing, but sometimes getting where we want to be in life takes a little bit of tough love and it takes a little bit of truth telling. And so if you have some things that you've noticed, you say, or you hear other people saying it, or maybe it's even something that I say, that's just one of those feel good statements, or that's a very big misconception about how to get healthier or whatever the random topic is. I would so love to hear it. I love thinking of these things and like how we can be more careful with our words and with the expressions that we're using. So lay them on me, sisters. Let me know what are those things out there that are very common in our culture, or maybe they were things that you always heard growing up and then you grew up and you realized, well, that was like the worst life advice ever. So lay them on me, let me know what those are and I will catch you all next week. Thanks for tuning in. It is my mission to give women back the confidence that they need to show up bigger in their lives. Right now, the world more than ever needs women who are on fire and living their purpose. If you want to join me in this mission, there's a few things you can do. One, you can share this podcast with the women in your circle. Two, you can join me in my Facebook group, Simplified Fat Loss, or you can subscribe to my newsletter at NikkiOday.com. 